Howdy folks, this is Levi Kuhn at Kuhn Truck and RV, your Class B and B-plus RV specialist. Please check out our website at truckandrv.com. That's truckandrv.com to view all of our inventory. Uh, this unit, I hate to inform you, is already sold. This was a custom request uh, from Bill. He came out and looked at this unit and drove it uh, a couple days after I took delivery of this. We went through a few different things, picked out what he wanted to do. I uh, had a few custom requests and uh, got this unit set up for him. So this again, this unit is already sold. If you have any questions for us though, feel free to give us a call at 440-OHIO-RVs. Alrighty folks, it's time for the inside portion of today's video tour. We are inside of this 1999 Explorer 230 XLW. Not to be confused with the Explorer Conversion Van Company that a lot of you are probably familiar with. This company's name was actually spelled X-P-L-O-R-E-R. -E um, 86,630 miles on it. This unit is already sold. Again, I say this unit is already sold, and I apologize to those of you that uh, are watching this. Levi, why the heck are you posting a unit that's already sold? Uh, I wanted to talk about one of our guys as well as some of the things that we are capable of doing here. Uh, and then Bill, the customer that's purchasing this unit, also had requested that I do this video uh, for his future reference as well as now he could share this video with family and friends uh, to give them a glimpse of what he's going to be touring the country in. So I had originally purchased this unit, uh, I think it was back in February or March. Uh, Bill had previously been in, we discussed what he was looking for, he drove a few different things. I had an Explorer van at that time that was already spoken for, uh, but he had checked it out. He loved the layout, he loved the floor plan, um, he really liked the back bed which is located back there. Uh, so he said, hey, if you ever get another one of those, give me a call. Uh, just so happened a few weeks later, I stumbled across another one, and I did give him a call. He came in, drove it, checked it out, looked at it. We went over uh, a few different things of what I anticipated or expected to do as part of our normal routine. Uh, and then he also made a few custom requests that day, which we stayed in touch along uh, with each other throughout the process. And he made a few more requests of things that we did uh, accomplish for him, I do believe. Uh, and hopefully he's very satisfied with the work that we've done for him. Um, so this was, I think this was back in March, uh, if I remember correctly, March 16th, uh, the day that he came in and drove it and we discussed and kind of worked details and stuff out. Uh, fast forward, we're now at uh, June 22nd. So it has been kind of a long process, but we did do a lot of work to this unit for him. Uh, one of those things here was the dinette when I originally got this. I do believe that somebody had kind of redone this dinette themselves. It just wasn't entirely finished out um, the way that Bill or myself uh, liked. Um, I wouldn't have put it out there. Regardless of Bill's request with uh, the dinette, the way it was looking, we would have done something with it. Uh, this is kind of what we came up with for uh, Bill, as well as with uh, going through a few different ideas with him. Uh, we chose to turn it back into a dinette so he'd have an option for the third bed. And then uh, I kind of put Greg loose on this to give his, uh, his touch to it, to what he thought would work well and suit uh, basically anybody, really. Uh, Bill, as well as anybody else that may want to use this unit or what we thought would be the best fit for this dinette. So this is what we came up with here. We used the original table or the table that was in it already. Uh, he rebuilt the bases. The cushions are brand new, the fabric and the foam both. Um, since we changed the sizes, I had to get brand new foam and uh, covers and everything made for this. So all of that is brand new. Um, the table, you can see the little brown rail down there. The table is going to drop down. You're going to take the leg out. That's going to sit on that rail. They're going to take these back cushions and put them in the center to create the bed. And then another cool thing that Greg came up here actually was with, uh, so this back here on this side of the dinette hinges. There's a latch here and then a latch on that side. So we can take the, uh, unhook the latches and then fold this back down underneath of the foam. So that way when you swivel this front chair, if you're a little bit taller and this length here is gonna be too short for you, uh, you're going to want to put your head and stuff down here because it'll be a little more comfortable. We tried to line this dinette up as close as possible if we could, as we could with the height of this chair. So you can put your head up here and then lay down. And when this chair is swiveled, you could then use this as a more bed length here. Again, this chair is going to be swiveled, so you've got to imagine it's turning or facing towards me. Uh, you can use this as more bed length so you can hang your feet out over here. So you're going to have a long bed that's pretty comfortable for most anybody of any height uh, range. The... Then above, be, above this up here, uh, there was not a microwave in this. Bill thought he would want a microwave. Uh, so this is what Greg and I came up with, mainly Greg. Uh, this was his design and his idea. We just kind of, the only mile of the input was where, where are we going to put this? I had nothing to do with how he built this or anything like that. Uh, Greg is a great craftsmanship. He is, he's been here for, I think, five to six years now. He's married to my sister, so I've known him for a long time. Uh, I respect the hell out of Greg. He's a great guy. 
He's somebody that pays very good attention to the fine detail uh, and does the best of his abilities to make anything and everything happen for us that we can and also uh, make sure that it happens properly and, and is done the way that it should be. Again, uh, he, he came up with this design. We thought it was kind of dark up in here in this area, so we also incorporated another light into this to get some more light up front here. Uh, but we uh, he built this cabinet and installed this microwave in here. Microwave is brand new. The uh, thermostat here for the furnace is brand new. This wall uh, had a little bit of something going on here. Uh, it actually had an MDF covering on it. Uh, that would kind of was kind of swollen from age and maybe a little bit of a water issue. Uh, it wasn't uh, once we tore it apart. There was no structural, uh, but we decided to just basically throw away that MDF that was swollen up, uh, and basically this whole entire wall from here to here, I believe, uh, Greg had recovered with a new material. The bottom window down here, the lot, the bottom portion of this window does open. The crank is there. This is screened. Uh, we do have a, a shade there. Curtains that pull across that window there. Gonna spin around to you. Um, so the red light is on here. Uh, this unit did not have a coach battery disconnect in it. Uh, we did not discuss this with Bill. We did do this for you um, and actually upgraded to the nicer version. This is a low voltage disconnect. Um, I'm not sure why more manufacturers don't use this. This is often used in the Chinooks. So this is all pretty much fully automatic. When your battery voltage gets down to a certain voltage, this thing's going to shut itself off. You don't have to worry about shutting it off. It's going to kill itself, um, which I think the red light means now that I've got the lights on in here, uh, I think it is getting towards that. Uh, don't quote me on that, Bill. I'll ask Greg about that and let you know for sure. Uh, but I do believe the red light means we are getting lower on voltage and it might kick out here in a little bit. But uh, a much nicer system than the old manual knob. You can turn this off by rocking the switch there. Uh, but you don't have to worry about it. It's going to kick itself off when it uh, gets down to a certain voltage. We do have a counter extension here. You can flip up if you need more counter space. Uh, and there we go. It just went off. I'm going to pause here, get me some voltage, and we'll get back into it. All right, so I fired up the engine here, so I got some voltage. I'm charging off the alternator. The coach batteries are charging off the alternator. Uh, so I've got some voltage here to finish up this video. Uh, you've got a new kitchen faucet here. You've got a single basin kitchen sink. All of the cabinet doors uh, in this unit were repainted. Uh, from the factory, they're covered with a uh, kind of a plasticky, hard to explain, but it's, it's a coating that it, it peels off over time. Actually, comes off mostly in just one piece. Uh, I believe they adhere it with a glue. It was starting to come off the doors, so all that was stripped off the doors, and then all the doors were repainted uh, white to match the rest of the cabinets that everything was already white prior. Just repainted all of them white. A uh, decent amount of storage up top here. Paper towel holder here on the stainless backsplash. This little guy here is to hold up the cover for our cooktop. We can latch that there, like so. Hard to do with one hand, but that'll hold there. Hold that cover up for that cooktop. And again, we have a two burner cooktop located right here. Um, this refrigerator was not uh, installed by us, but it is a newer style refrigerator. So this uh, has been installed sometime in the recent past. Uh, has the small freezer compartment up top, just like all of them. And this is a three-way controls right here. It's fully electronic. Just push the buttons to get into which mode you want to go into. Uh, it's going to be powered off of 12 volt electricity, 110 volt electricity, or propane gas. Those are the three operation modes. There is an extra fan on the back of the fridge. If you want to turn that on to help circulate the air in there, a uh, 12 volt power source located just directly below that cigarette lighter style underneath the cooktop. Propane furnace is located right here. This here is our fuse panel and circuit breakers. Uh, Noxus gas detector next to that. 110 outlet there. Slide out pantry here. Ladies are going to love that one. storage overhead. This one here is intended to be your wardrobe. Got the rod up top, then we do have a light switch in here. More storage up top. Let's go back alongside the air conditioning unit. Uh, the air conditioning unit was toast, so we got a brand new air conditioning unit this as well. 
Uh, light switch up there for some of the lights here over the bed. Another 110 outlet. Deep storage that goes alongside that AC there. Nice big bed back here in the back of the unit. This is one of the things that Bill liked about this four planner slide up the most was it had a dedicated bed that he didn't have to put up and down every single night. The lower portion of the windows do open. Crank knob there, that's gonna tilt out, that is screened. Uh, blinds or shades on those. Got a couple of whites back here in the corner. Drop down curtain on the rear window, which is your emergency exit window. Got the red knobs, unlatch those, and you can that window's gonna pop out in case of an emergency. Replicate over here, bottom portion does uh, tip out, and again has the shade on that one. Got a light there as well as there. Uh, TV here is a 15 and a half inch flat screen TV with a built-in DVD player. Uh, makes wiring and everything much easier when we do the built-in DVD players. This is on a swivel arm so we can tilt this around back here uh, to view it from whichever angle we want to We're back here in the bed. Uh, we also put a 12 volt inverter so if you wanted to watch uh, the TV um, while you're boondocking or anything like that, uh, you are able to do that. Um, just plug the TV into the inverter here and you can power that TV off the inverter. Remote control mounted on the wall. Got a few hooks on the wall there where you can hang a few different things. Oh, we got a nice size wet bath here. Commode obviously located right there. Uh, but decent size, we've got a vent up top above the toilet. Light on this side. Shower head goes down to your sink faucet. Sink faucet is new. Uh, there's a diverter on this that's gonna send that up to your shower head. Uh, single basin bathroom sink there. We've got some new furniture we put on the wall, towel ring soap. Uh, soap bar holder there, mirror on the wall as well. Nice little wet bath here. One of the things that Bill did like and requested that we leave was this hardwood flooring that was already in here. What do sea monsters eat for lunch? Fish and ships. We had a few custom requests in this thing um, from Bill. Uh, we do not mind doing custom requests and things like this. Uh, we do prefer that it's something that if you come out and look at our uh, back lot inventory, the stuff that's not ready, uh, so we can do these things while we are going to be putting them through our shop. Um, since the unit's already dirty, uh, we don't have to clean it twice because a lot of times these things create dust, dirt, things of that nature. Uh, so if you have anything that you do, maybe want some customization done to, we always have a lot of units sitting out back. Uh, you can give me a call and I can go through and do a few different things for you. If you got an idea of roughly what make model floor plan they're looking for, I can let you know if we've got one out here and maybe get you to stop out and look at it. And we can go over a few of those custom requests if you have those. Even if you don't have custom requests, again, we always have a lot of stuff sitting out back that you can come view and uh, kind of put a deposit or tabs on it, dibs on it, uh, for when we do get it ready, uh, that it will be your unit once it's ready to go. Uh, this thing cleaned up very, very nicely. We did put a lot of work into it again, like I said, uh, but cleaned up to be a very nice unit. Uh, we have the Odin 2800 generator showing 494 hours. We've got a control panel here, levels test, water pump, water heater switch. Pretty decent sized storage compartment up front over the cab here. Twelve volt charging station, uh, USB chargers. So you can lay a device in the in the little cubby there, and uh, plug your cell phone, tablet, anything like that, and it'll fit up there. Uh, I'm trying to remember anything else we did. I think that's about wraps it up. Again, a lot of uh, suspension uh, work was done that you'll I'll speak a little bit to in the outside portion of the video. Uh, we got power windows, power locks, tilt, cruise, power mirrors, um, old radios toast, installed a uh, new Bluetooth capable radio for Bill, uh, Dodge 3500 chassis, 5.9 liter V8 engine, uh, this little silver rocker switch here says radio, up is going to be powering the radio off the chassis battery, down is going to be powering the radio off the coach battery, so if you parked in a campground, you want to listen to the radio you can flip that switch down and it's going to power it off the coach battery uh, one of the things that i asked him i said hey well we got this in here do you want a backup camera uh, he said yes so we did install a backup camera this is the backup camera system that we prefer to use if you ask to have a backup camera installed most likely this is the system you're going to get it replaces the rear view mirror why do we like this system typically there's a we have a hard time finding these standalone monitors we're finding a spot to mount these standalone monitors. We have to go up here, which impedes with your view. We have to go up here, which impedes with view. Uh, we go in the cup holders, which wastes the cup holders. 
Uh, we just haven't been able to find a good spot. We like to put those. We stumbled across this rear view mirror setup uh, from rear view safety. Uh, we really like it. It's a nice, easy, clean install. Don't have wires drug across the dash or anything like that. Just replaces the rear view mirror. It does have a slight reflect reflective capability to it. So you can, you can see in the back of the unit without it on a little bit. Uh, but for the most part, um, it is going to act as a rear view or backup camera. Uh, overall, I'd call this thing a 9 out of 10. Shined up very nicely on the outside. You'll, you'll hear that if you stick around for the outside portion of the video. Uh, interior cleaned up very nicely. And if you have any questions on this one or any one of our units, uh, feel free to give us a call at Coon Truck and RV. Our new phone number is 440-OHIO-RVs. Again, that's 440-OHIO-RVS. Alrighty folks, it's time to run around the outside of this Explorer 230 XLW. We are 21 feet from bumper to bumper. We have six brand new tires. We have a brand new 11 foot Fiamma awning. This one does sit on the Dodge 3500 chassis. It is powered by the 5.9 liter V8 engine. Uh, we also have a lot of new steering components underneath the front end. Uh, tie rods, tie rod ends, a lot of new stuff underneath. As far as the front steering goes, uh, outside of this unit shined up pretty nice. See the white paint shined up pretty nice. The stripes are still also in pretty decent shape. There's a few uh, imperfections, a few places that I'll point out as we go around. Uh, but overall, uh, shined up pretty, pretty nicely for a 2000, or excuse me, a 1999 Explorer van. Uh, we have two vents here, one and two that are gonna give us access and also vent the refrigerator. Here we have a vent for the propane furnace. We got a couple of exterior outlets, vent and access to our water heater. Engine exhaust, generator exhaust. We have a fairly large storage compartment here on the passenger's rear corner. This top smaller portion here is pass through. As you can see, the door on the other side is open. Uh, bottom portion here is not pass through, but this is a nice slide out tray. The crank for the awning as well as the center rafter and some tire tools are in there. This back stripe up here on the top as you can see, it does show its age and start to crack and fade. We've got a new vent cover on the air conditioner, brand new backup camera. We've got the tow package down bottom, storage compartment on the rear end here. Kind of narrow, but it goes as to across the unit back here. Uh, this does have the Firestone Ride Right airbags. We're going to fill these uh, right here for the passenger side and I'm going to mimic that on the driver's side here. Trailer plug for your trailer wiring. Coming around to the driver's side. Do have a little few chips out of this bottom stripe here as you can see. Again, nice big storage compartment on the driver's side corner. Again, the top portion is passed through. The lower portion is not. Uh, this pump system here is for the hydraulic leveling jacks that are on this uh, unit here. You got some leveling blocks, your dog bone adapter to plug into your 110, and then your uh, 30 amp shore power cord. Black tank flush, gonna fill our onboard freshwater tank here. City water connection. This one here, a couple of exterior outlets. Shore power cord's gonna hook up here. Stripes are a little faded here on this one. Stripe up top looks nice. This here is the vent for the range hood or the microwave. I believe that's the microwave now that I'm thinking about it. Um, stripe up top here is pretty nice. Body again there is a little fading in this swoosh. A few little nicks down here, but nothing is unexpected for the age of this unit. Overall, again, shined up very nicely for $19.99. Uh, forgot the gas tank here. Just kind of concentrating on the stripes. We've got our sewer dumps, and then the valves here are located here to dump our sewer.